Today, we're going to be exploring the new Canopy framework. This is a framework that has been developed by the Gen AI team at Pinecone. And the idea is essentially to help us build better RAG pipelines without needing to get into all of the details of how to build a RAG pipeline. Because it's very easy to just build a very simple RAG pipeline, but it's very hard to build a good one. And it also comes with a lot of nice little features. One that I really like is the ability to just chat within the terminal and see the difference between a RAG output and a non-RAG output so that you can very quickly evaluate how well your RAG pipeline is performing. Now, all of this is being wrapped up into a very easy to use framework. So let's jump into it and see how we can use it. Okay, so we can see the GitHub repo here and yeah, this is a short description and we can kind of come to this visual here. It gives us sort of a rough idea of kind of what is going on there. And if we come down to here, we can see the different components of Canopy. I'm really going to be focusing on the Canopy CLI down here just to show you, you know, how to get started with it. So we're mostly going to be using everything through CLI. Okay, and if we come down to the setup here, uh, we have, okay, you can create a virtual environment. You can go ahead and do that, it's fine. I'm not going to in this case. Uh, but then what we do want is we want to install the package. So I'm actually just gonna copy this and I'm gonna come over to my terminal window here. All right, so I'm gonna pip install. I'm just gonna add a upgrade flag here. And yes, I will let that install. I've already installed it, so once it has installed, we should be able to just run Canopy. And we'll get this error message uh, to begin with. And that's because we haven't set a few environment variables. But we do know from this that it is installed. So to deal with this, we need to set some environment variables. So we have Pinecone API key, Pinecone environment. There's also the OpenAI API key as well that we should add into there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna run uh, Vim. I'm just gonna add it all of these into a some environment variables file. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, on Mac. So I'm gonna do export Pinecone API key. I'm gonna put my API key in there. I'm gonna do export Pinecone environment and also put that in there. And then I'm gonna do export OpenAI API key. Put that in there. So for the Pinecone API key and environment, we go to app.pinecone.io. We go to API keys, and I'm just gonna copy this, and I'm gonna take note my environment as well. So US West One GCP, and come back over here, and I'm, I'm just gonna put it in, into this here. Um, so you can try and seal my API keys if you like. And for the OpenAI API key, you want to go to platform, openai.com we go to api keys at the top here and i already created one but i'm going to create a new one so kind of be demo two i create my secret key and again i'm just going to go put it in here great so put those in and now i can just Go ahead and do that. Now, with that done, let's try and run Canopy again. And we should get something that looks like this. Now, what we can do is create a new index. Now, to create a new index, you'd run Canopy new, and then you'd have your index name. I'm gonna call mine Canopy 101, but I already actually created Canopy 101. So I'm just gonna call it 101A for now. Okay, so I confirm. Okay, and then from there, what we want to do is actually add our data to this index. Now, let me jump across to a notebook and I'll show you how we can create data in the correct format for Canopy. Okay, so we're gonna work through this notebook very quickly. There'll be a link to this notebook at the top of the video right now. So we're gonna take this data set that I scraped from archive. It's just a load of AI archive papers I've used either this version or the chunk version of this example a few times in recent videos. But if we just take a quick look at what is in there, we see that we basically have, okay, there's this understanding HTML with large language models. 
there's a summary and then we have the content the content is kind of the bit we care most about now the content in there is fairly long and typically what we do to handle that is we we have to chunk it up into smaller uh, parts so let me just take the length of that okay so yes it's quite a few uh, characters there that wouldn't all fit into the context window of a lm or you know it may fit in but the whole 400 archive papers definitely wouldn't and when we are feeding knowledge into an LM, we also want to be feeding that knowledge into smaller chunks so that we're not filling that context window so that we don't run into LLM recall issues. So to avoid that, yeah, we use chunking. And fortunately, that's kind of built in to Canopy. So we don't even need to like care about it. It's going to be done automatically. All we need to do is set up this data format here so we have id text source so where the source is coming from you don't have to pass that you can just leave it blank it's fine and then metadata which is just a, a dictionary containing any relevant information that you may or may not want in and like attached to your vectors again you, you don't need to put anything in here okay so we run this this is just transforming our working face data set into this format Okay, and removing the columns that we don't want. Then what I'm going to do is convert this into a JSON lines file. Okay, and then should be able to take a look at that over here. And yeah, we can see we can see all of this. Okay, so with that done, we can move on to actually putting all of this into our index using Canopy. Okay, once we have our data set, we can go ahead and run canopy, upset, and it would be in here. So this is where I saved my data in the same directory I'm in now. And actually, you know, we can just see that quickly. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to upset this. So canopy upset. There we go. Now, when we try and do that, we're actually going to get this error. And that's because we also need a index name environment variable. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. Uh, you can also set index name here within the command, but I'm going to do it via the via this. Okay. And I want A to start with. And do the upset. It'll ask us to confirm that everything was correct. So just you know, quick check. It you know looks pretty good say yes and we continue and then yeah we're going to get this loading bar it's going to just show us the progress of our upset but i've already created my index doing this exact same process so i'm going to actually cancel that and what i'm going to do is change my index name to that other index and then i'm going to start canopy okay so i'm going to do canopy start and what this is going to do is start up the API or canopy server. Okay. So from here, I can actually, you know, I could go to my localhost 8000 and go to the docs and I can see, if I zoom in a little bit, see so we have some documentation. We have all the endpoints and stuff in here that we can, we can use. Now I actually want to use the CLI. Now the CLI requires that you have the, the canopy server running in the background. So I'm going to switch across to a new terminal window. I'm going to activate my ML environment. I'm going to run source mac env and I'm going to export my index name. Then what I want to do is run canopy chat. And so you can run canopy chat without any arguments and that will, that will, you know, it's like you're chatting with your LM and it's doing rag in the background and you're getting your responses. But I also actually want to do it with no rag what no rag will do is show us a comparison of the LM response with and without rag. So this is incredibly useful for just evaluating what rag is actually doing for you. So yeah, let's see, let's take a look at this and yeah, we should see some pretty interesting results. Okay, cool. So we get a nice little note up there. This is a debugging tool, not to be used for production. Uh, but that's cool because we're just testing it. So 
hello there. Start with that. Press escape and enter. I will send my uh, my query with context rag. Okay, so we see with this query, uh, we literally get the same response because you know it doesn't really matter whether we're using rag or not uh, for sort of general chat. But what if we have something you know like an actual query that is relevant to the data set that we put behind this? So our data set contains information about LAM2, the large language model, because this is a it's an archive data set on like AI. So I can ask it something like that. I can ask it, can you tell me about Llama 2? So obviously with context, Llama 2 is a collection of pre-trained and fine-tuned large language models, really ranging in scale from 770 billion parameters, so on and so on, right? That's cool. Then no rag, I apologize, but I'm not aware of any specific entity called Llama 2. Okay, so this, this LLM, it just doesn't know anything about LAM2 because its training data cutoff was like September 2021. So yeah, it, it cannot know about that. So I don't know, let's continue the conversation. Like, okay, fascinating. Can you tell me more about when am I going to use Llama? Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, cool. So with context, rag we have llama 2 specifically the fine-tuned lms optimized for dialogue use cases found to outform open source chat models on most benchmarks that were tested so on and so on okay so also gives us a source document which is pretty nice now without a context okay llamas can serve various purposes and be useful in different situations q zones pack animals therapy animals Guard animals, apparently. I didn't know that. And then, okay, maybe. And in sustainable agriculture. So, obviously, one of those answers is a little bit better than the other, at least for our for our use case. Now, let's ask you a slightly more complicated question. So, can you tell me about Llama 2 versus the still bird? Now, this is the sort of question where a typical reg pipeline, if not built well, will probably struggle because there's actually kind of two search queries in here. We want to be searching for Llama 2 and we also want to be searching for the Stilbert, which appear in different papers. But typically the way that reg would be implemented, at least, you know, your first versions and, and whatever else, that's probably going to get passed to your vector database as a single query. The good thing about Canopy is that it will handle this and it will actually split this up into multiple queries. So we're doing multiple searches, getting results from the, the Silbert paper and the Llama 2 paper. And then it's gonna provide us, hopefully, with a good comparison between the two. All right, so Llama 2 is a collection of pre-trained and fine tuned large language models, so on and so on. Cool. The Silbert is smaller, faster, and lighter version of BERT language model. In summary, LAM2 is specifically summarized for dialogue use cases, while this Silbert is a more efficient version of the BERT model that can use a various natural language processing tasks. Okay, I think, you know, so it's a good comparison. Without context, obviously, it doesn't know what Llama 2 is. So, yeah, it's, it, it's like, okay, it's not a known entity or term in the realm of NLP or AI. However, Silbert refers to a specific model architecture used for various NLP tasks. So it actually it can tell us a little bit about the Silbert because this is a this is an older model. So it, it does know about that, but it can't give us a good comparison. So that's a very quick introduction to the Canopy framework. I think from this you can very clearly see what the pros of using something like this are. Of course, this is just the CLI. There's also the Canopy server and the actual framework itself, uh, which you can obviously go ahead and, and try out. But for now, that's it for this video. I hope all this has been useful. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.